The questions that we get asked are many and varied, and you'd be quite surprised what some of the questions are about. Over the last couple of months, there have been a number of questions which seem to have recurred quite regularly, and they all relate to property. So I thought I'd pull them all together today and just cover them very quickly in today's soundbite. So let's talk property. Three quick points for you to consider. They won't take long. First, getting tax relief for furnishings in a residential let. Second, how long do you have to live in a house before it becomes your home? Obviously, we're talking capital gains tax here. And third, builders building their own homes. What about the VAT? First, let's have a look at claiming tax relief for furniture, etc., in a, in a furnished let, the new renewals basis. This doesn't apply to furnished holiday lets because here you claim capital allowances but you cannot claim capital allowances on other residential lets. A history lesson. Before the 6th of April 2016, if your property was furnished, you were allowed a 10% wear and tear allowance to cover the cost of replacing items of furniture, whether you spent that money or not. From the 6th of April 2016, this has all changed. The wear and tear allowance has been abolished in favour of the Replacement Domestic Items Relief. That one trips off the tongue, doesn't it? Otherwise known as the renewals basis. So how does it work? Well, you get no tax relief when you buy an item, either on its own or if it comes with the property. When you come to replace it, you get tax relief on the net cost of the replacement. That is, the cost of rep the replacement less any proceeds from the sale of the original item. There are restrictions if the new item is significantly better than the old one, and this might restrict the amount of relief that you can claim. Similar rules apply to companies as well. Most individual landlords prepare letting accounts to the 5th of April, but companies can vary. So if the company's accounting period straddles the 1st of April 2016, you divide the accounting period into two, apply the wear and tear allowance to the first part and the renewal basis to the second. So now to my next topic. When is a home not a home? How long do you have to live in it to establish it as your home and therefore exempt from capital gains tax? The answer is, it's not the time you live there, but the quality of the time. Is there an air of permanence or do you look as though you're just camping in the living room? If the evidence is strong, you don't need to live there for very long at all, although you probably want to stay there for uh, at least a month or so. There must be a presumption of permanence, and you need to have the evidence, whether this is your name on the electoral roll at that address, phone bills, and other items like that. And you probably need to have moved the whole family in. Lastly, let's turn our attention to the situation where a builder wants to build his own house and reclaim the VAT on materials. HMRC's view is that the correct way is to use the DIY refund scheme and not put it through their business. Remember that if you use the DIY refund scheme, the property cannot be used in any business activity. Under the old rules before January 2011, you had a choice. You could put it through your business and then sell the house to yourself, which of course be zero rated as a new build, or you could use the DIY refund scheme. Under the new rules, HMRC's view is that you have to use the DIY refund scheme, but you will be able to reclaim VAT on the cost of materials. But remember that the claim must be made within three months of getting the completion certificate. And it must be a single claim. You can't make multiple claims. So I hope this quick review of three common property issues was useful. As always, if you have any questions, please get in touch. I'm Alan Long from the Long Partnership, making life less taxing.